Hi, my name is Gabby Cerusi and I am an intern here at Davidson College's Van Every and Smith Galleries. Today I am here with 2000 alum Caitlin Haskell, the current curator of International Modern Art at the Art Institute of Chicago. She has been with the museum since March of 2018 and this specific role since July of 2018. Before heading to Chicago, she worked at the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art for about six and a half years as both assistant and associate curator of painting and sculpture. Before that, she received her undergraduate degree in art history and Russian here at Davidson before acquiring her master's and PhD in art history from the University of Texas at Austin. Thank you so much for being here today and let's jump into it. Maybe speak a little bit about your um education post Davidson and what you needed for your current role and other roles that you've had um, as curator. Yeah, so um, after Davidson, I worked for a few years um, and, uh, you know, kind of wanted to get that experience before going on to graduate school, but um, I did a, a master's degree and also a PhD in art history. Um, so, you know, most curators of, you don't, you don't have to have a PhD to, to be a curator. Um, a lot of contemporary curators, um, you know, choose to kind of go right into the, the field. Um, but for me, it was important to have kind of that academic background. Um, and, uh, you know, then I, I, I would say in addition to the training that you get in, in school, you also have to have experiences at, at museums. So uh, I worked at the Manil Collection and had a great fellowship there while I was still um, writing my dissertation. Um, I taught a little bit while I was writing my dissertation at UT Austin um, and then kind of launched my curatorial career after that. Awesome. Um, and then you, I feel like you probably, some of your fascination with international uh, modern art came from your time abroad, um, but if you could speak a little bit more about if there was something that drew you specifically to that. I, I mean, I, I love to travel and I love to study languages and I, I love to look at art. So, um, you know, uh, the first time I studied abroad was actually in high school. Um, I, I did my, I think it was my junior year um, at a school in, not, not the full year, but like a portion of my, my junior year. Uh, at a, a school in Yalta in Ukraine. And so when I went to college, I just, I knew I wanted to study abroad at some point. So uh, the spring semester of my sophomore year, I was at the University of St. Petersburg, which was amazing. Just really you know, polishing my Russian skills. And then um, the following spring, I did an entirely different program um, that was organized by Davidson. And so it was seven art historians and, and art majors and, um, uh, Shaw Smith, um, you know, was was leading us, and we would have language classes in the morning, and then would have a seminar, and then we'd go out in the afternoon and and look at art together, whether you know at the Louvre or other museums um, in the environs of Paris, um, Musée d'Orsay, um, and then we would take weekend trips and, and things like that. So that was that was all incredible, and I also I really do think about the group that we had in Paris as as being very similar to some of the seminars that you have in grad school, where it's just like a, a group of people really um, thinking hard and working closely together. Yeah, that's awesome. Very immersive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I studied abroad in Madrid and got to go to the Prado and Reina Sofia for oh, class. That was, great. It was um, yeah, something that is unlike any other experience. Uh, seeing there absolutely is. There, there's nothing like it, you know, and you're in front of the actual artwork and it's just an indelible experience. So. Yeah, so true. Um, and then if you could talk about maybe one of your favorite projects that you've worked on um, or something that you've really enjoyed during your time at the Art Institute. Yeah, I mean, at the Art Institute, um, right now I'm working on a, a project about the artist Ray Johnson. This is in fact, we're, we're in the final phases. So you can see like, this is the catalog. <laughs> we're not bound yet, but um, getting close. Um, so it's, it's kind of been a, a central focus of the past two years for me. Um, the collection, it's, it's a, a private collection from an archive of um, a single artist's work um, that we brought into the museum. And we've been cataloging it, learning about it, 
um, writing about it, opening it up to other researchers, and that will go on view in January. So uh, it's a show called Ray Johnson Care Of, and um, the title comes from the terminology of the Postal Service, um, you know, sending something care of someone else. So it's sort of thinking about the ways that Ray Johnson's practice shifted depending on the, the recipient of his work or whoever he was working with. Very cool. Um, and then just kind of to wrap up, uh, I want to kind of ask you about how maybe your roles or your uh, roles at the museum have kind of shifted ever since the beginning of the pandemic or if you've seen any um, specific changes that you've enjoyed or things that have been harder? You know, um, I, I'm not going to lie. It's been, it's like doing every, everything is just like a little bit harder, you know, mm -hmm. planning an exhibition. You, you really, yeah, if, you, if you've got the objects in front of you, you can sort of just instinctually like make a decision, like it should be shown this way or this is going to work or it's clearly not going to work. So now everything's just like slightly more vague, which then takes a little bit more time to make a decision and things like that. But, um, you know, I would also say that I, when I, when I look at my, my colleagues and, and the department that we have in modern and contemporary art, I think we're working better than ever in some ways. That it's just kind of brought everybody together. And, um, you know, maybe in the past where people are just like really doing their, their own thing, now we're just inherently collaborative. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been harder. Um, I, there, there was a very difficult period. Um, I remember the last day that I spent in the museum um, was, was March 13th. It was a Friday, and we thought, you know, they, they said the museum would be closed for two weeks, and it's like, oh my goodness, two whole weeks! Like, can you imagine? And because we're a museum that's open seven days a week, um, and then obviously that continued until July. Mm -hmm. um, but being able to reopen the museum and seeing the the commitment that not only the the leadership, um, you know, our director James Rondo, but also the board, um, you know, everybody has been so committed to keeping our program alive and not going dark, opening our doors in July. We, um, we did some rotations. We um, brought in artworks that had just been acquired. We thought hard about, you know, what do we want on, on view, you know, reopening at this moment in Chicago, you know, we, there's a statement to be made and being able to work on that was pretty incredible. Yeah. Um, so I, uh, just to give a couple of examples, um, my, I have a colleague um, who's been doing an exhibition um, with an artist, uh, Richard Hunt, who's kind of a, a living legend. He uh, went to the School of the Art Institute and we were able to um, put on view a little, um, just a, a small presentation of um, wire sculptures that he made in the 1950s. Um, and with that exhibition, um, you know, he is the first living artist to be on view in our collection of historical modern art. So that was pretty amazing. Um, we've just acquired um, two works by an amazing uh, Latin American modern painter um, by the name of Alice Rayon. Um, so we were doing a little bit of conservation on her work, putting new frames on the paintings, and we'll be getting them on view. So that's been really fun to work on. Um, and Gosh, I mean, we're also just doing our work on exhibitions, you know, so Ray Johnson, and then I'm working on a, a Cezanne retrospective um, with my colleague Gloria Broom and um, partners at Tate Modern. Um, so we've been just building that checklist and, um, you know, starting that project, um, starting that catalog, I should say, as well as working on the checklist. Well, it sounds like you guys are still very busy, which is good. I was just going to say, it's, it's, honestly a time to reimagine what a museum is, what a museum does, you know, um, what does it mean for a museum to be producing knowledge? What are the experiences we're trying to create for people? Um, and, and, and what is it, you know, that, that we do that allows us to, you know, serve a, a social function? So um, I think this has really been um, a moment for the Art Institute to think hard about, um, you know, the culture that we're putting on the walls, but also the culture that we have inside our building and, and how we want to work together and um, 
so that's, and I, and I think these are conversations that will serve us well into the future. So yes. it's um, coming out of the pandemic, but I think a, a lot of these are conversations that were long overdue. And now we have a chance to really, um, you know, address them and, and uh, think about who we want to be. And again, I just want to thank Caitlin for taking time out of her busy schedule to speak with me today and giving us a little glimpse of her role at the Art Institute.